Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. Today we are going to start another topic. Not that I won't return to this subject of the energies of the son of Alcyon, I will, but now we need to pull other threads from the thread, as you like to say. You normally create very interesting metaphorical figures, which in fact often translate exactly a feeling that we want. As in this case, bringing up a topic, this is very interesting. I really like. Maybe because of this desire of mine, to get so close to you, that many think I'm not the one speaking, that this is not manners, nor a way of speaking about an archangel. Well, I don't care. I'm not here wanting you to believe or disbelieve me, I'm not worried about that. It is exactly in this way, in the colloquial way, in the usual way that you speak, that I can reach your hearts. I become an accessible being, and not those beings who talk difficult, they speak everything correctly, and that you think you are on a pedestal and that you will never get there. It's this way, this often even funny way that I talk here on this channel, that I manage to attract many of you. You end up seeing me as a brother, as a friend which is exactly what I want to be for each of you, a friend, a brother, not an inaccessible being who stays there I don't know where, at a distance of I don't know where, and which we can never achieve. No, I'm here, talking the same way as you. After all, am I a being of light or am I not? It is not my way of speaking that will represent my smallest, or my greatest power, as I have said here many times, I know who I am, I know what I am, and I know what I do. So I'm not worried who's criticizing me, who thinks it's not me because of the way I'm talking. It is exactly because I am a being of light that I can modify my way of speaking to get closer to you, so that you realize that I am there by your side, and not up there somewhere in the universe, totally inaccessible. Those who know me, those who already know my energy, recognize me here on this channel. So why wouldn't it be me? Just because I speak differently? Just because I speak in a way closer to the way you speak? How much of a limiting belief, hey? What a limiting belief? Do you think that because we are beings of light and we are evolved beings we have to treat you like trash? Like something you have to stay away from? As something that has to not approach us because of its sinfulness? Like something we can't be close to because they aren't worthy of our friendship? Ah. That's where everyone is wrong. Exactly because we are beings of light, and have the power we have, we can be there, very close to you without being changed in any way. Just putting us in the middle of the crowd. Many have made comparisons of my actions with the actions of Sananda, Jesus, when he was on earth. Who did Jesus walk among? He walked among the poor, and that didn't mean Jesus kept himself on a pedestal, quite the contrary. He wanted to attract those with pure hearts, without power, without evil. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not preaching to the powerful, I am preaching to the humble. Not the humble, financially speaking, but the humble at heart, those who often allow themselves to be led by beliefs that are not correct, yes, I need to be together, I need to be close, to show them that it was all a lie. But how are they going to believe what I say if I say it in a rude way, if I speak seriously, if I speak in an arrogant way, and that I keep everyone away? Never. They would never believe me. Now if I speak the way I speak here, if I play with you, if I sometimes even treat you like children, it's because it's my way, more than loving, of being there among each one of you, to be there next to each one of you, so that you realize that this distance that was once created, that was said to you, no. You are sinners. You do not deserve to have any being of light by your side, because you sin. You have sins in your hearts. You are wrong. You are not worthy beings, and then everyone put us up there, on a pedestal. So today, you are seeing that this was all a lie, that we can be there, next to you, so that you feel our energy, so that you feel our love, so that you feel our care for you. So I'm not worried if whoever is listening to this right now is shaking their head and repeating to themselves, ah, that's never the archangel. 
You can repeat it my friend, repeat it as many times as you want, I'm talking exactly to you who are saying now, that it's not me. No problem. No problem. Keep disbelieving that it's me, and believing in your little limiting beliefs. It's your choice. The choice is yours my friend. Keep believing that it's not me. There is no problem. What matters is that everyone else who is here, and who is with me, and who is feeling the differences, knows that it is me, because if it weren't, none of what's happening here would have already happened, because there is no dark being that can do what I have already done here with the people who are following me on this channel. So if you want to continue discrediting me, you want to continue challenging me, saying that it's not me, continue, there is no problem. Continue with your limiting belief, continue with your heart closed. That doesn't make me love you any less. I continue to love you in the same way, respecting your moment of waking up, your moment to see the truth, it's your moment to free yourself from those beliefs that have been placed within you. It's a shame, because you could be here much further ahead of where we all are. Because I'm with the group, and the group is moving at a wonderful speed. This group is amazing. I don't count numbers. No, I don't want crowds, I want few, I want few, but I want few, engaged, I want few, involved, I want few, but believers in what they are doing. And that's what this group is doing and is at the forefront, in the front squad. Now for those who don't believe, it's a shame, because they're at the end of the line and it's going to take a long time to get to where all these people who are here have already reached. So, stop these limiting beliefs. Respect those here. If you do not like it, if you don't believe, excellent. Stay for you. Why keep throwing negative energy into the comments, putting things against what is being done? What do you get with it? What do you get? Ah, I'm just giving my opinion. Correct, you are stating your opinion. And is it echoing? I assure you not. Many times it does, because you get together in a small group exactly to do that, you live to do this. They choose a certain channel, and the same group starts to defame the channel, making threats, to see if it can destabilize everyone there. Nothing happened here. If one, two, or three came out, great, it's because they weren't ready, and the doors will be open to them to come back whenever they want. There is no resentment. After all, I am who I am, and my love is unconditional. There is no resentment. Neither mine nor anyone in the group. We will be with open arms, because we have already overcome these barriers. Yes, I put myself in the middle of the group, because I answer for them. This group that is here is no longer bothered by this type of aggression, he no longer cares what people say about what they think. They are so engaged, so believers, in what they are doing, seeing so many results, which for them is just one more thing, that they are talking nonsense. Only that. So grow up. Stop. What do you gain from this? What do you earn? Keep inciting even more discord? So I ask you, is this a light thing? Putting your opinion is valid, now inciting disharmony, inciting disagreement, is that from the light? So I ask you, is this an attitude of a being of light? Don't believe me, I respect your opinion, I respect your belief, but you don't need to keep saying this all the time to try to see if someone plays your game, because here no one is going to play your game. This stage has been overcome a long time ago. We are already too far ahead to receive this kind of thing. The group does not allow itself to be involved in this. Those who are really engaged in everything we are doing here and who see results, no longer let themselves be carried away by this type of thing. Now, for those who still have doubts in their hearts, you may be able to rally them to your side. So continue. Keep doing what you're doing. Raising problems, raising doubts, placing a bunch of nonsense that you post in the comments, to try to see if it destabilizes the channel. Keep going. But you guys. I think you forget who you're messing with. You think it's not me, very well. So let's see who will win this battle. 
let's see if you can destroy this channel. If it is an affront that you are doing to me, I accept the battle, I don't run away from the fight. My sword is always ready, always to shed light and love. Only that. So pay to see. Pay to see, and you will realize that up front, you regretted the time you wasted, doubting everything that is happening here. And then, I tell you, maybe it's too late. Good my brothers. Let's continue our classes. That was just a little message. Don't try to understand. I know who it was for, for the people this message was. And each one of them will listen and have already heard my message. That's what I wanted. So let's go. Let's continue our classes, which are very good. As I was saying, we will talk about these energies again later. So now, I'm going to go back a little bit about the universe again. Many of its scientists try to understand how planet Earth was created. Yes, because with the limited minds they have, they have not been able to discover even about planet Earth, let alone in relation to others. So let's go. I can tell you that no one will ever come to, the decision, the revelation, because, yes, your scientists are very intelligent, because they have advanced minds. All scientists are evolved souls who came from outside, which is why they have so many crazy ideas and so many ideas that often make you evolve. I will talk about this another time. So how are planets and solar systems created? You will understand that it is a very large movement of energy. It's not something you take in your hands and create. It's a great movement of energy. Many have already seen it in their films and this has already been, let's say, proven, that outside the orbit of the planets, the magnetism of each planet, there is a space without gravity, without any force. So much so that you would remain floating in this space indefinitely, as there is no force pulling you either downwards, upwards, left or right. Nothing pulls them. Very good. So for a solar system to be created, a very large quantum of energy is needed, because it's not just about creating little planets. Think about the size of your Sunday. It is immense, and Alcyon's sun is thousands of times bigger than this one. So think about the size of the energy created, necessary to generate something like this. So only the strength of our father or mother God is capable of this. Now trying to explain to you how this happens is practically impossible, because as I have said several times here, you need to transform everything we say into an image, so that you can understand. It's part of Tersera's mind. There are a lot of things you don't understand. When we say that we are energy, what do you mean by that? Let's go. Let's do an exercise today. I tell you that I am pure energy with consciousness. What do you imagine? What do you imagine me to be like? No, no, take off that human outfit, because I don't have that outfit. I wore this outfit so I could show myself to you, but I don't have that outfit. I am energy. Very good. I ask the question again, how do you see me as energy? What am I to you? A point of light? A ball of light? A star? A planet? What am I to you? How do you create me in your minds? Even more so when I add that I am an energy with consciousness. There you go, that's when everything got complicated. What do you mean, an energy with consciousness? An energy with a brain? That's how you think, because you don't yet have the resources to understand this. It's too complicated for you to understand. Do you translate it exactly this way? It's like a ball of light with a brain, just because I have consciousness? Strange isn't it? Very strange. I would be a monster. According to your conception, I would be a monster. It would be a brilliant thing with a brain inside. Hmm, very ugly. I prefer my human clothes, it's much prettier. So, my brothers, many things are still difficult for you to explain, because you cannot translate them into images, which is the way you know to understand things. You need to solidify, visualize, certain things, so that you understand. 
so I'm going to make your life easier. Think that I am a big star, bright, with a very bright white light. Not a yellow light, I have crystalline white light. Anyone who knows what crystalline white light is will understand exactly what I'm talking about. It is a very different light from the light you have, because it is the crystalline light of our Father or Mother God. Very good. So you can imagine me as a star, a star that shines, and shines brightly. Not that I'm showing off here, but I'm very big. What reaches here, to the physical body of this speaker, is a millionth or much less of my energy, because otherwise she wouldn't be able to handle it, and this has already been complicated for her to receive. She went through a long training, to be able to get along with my energy, because it is immense. Okay, if you want me to tell you what size I am, then let's do it. I'm a little bigger than your Sunday. So you can see the size of my strength. And then when I tell you that I am an offshoot of our Father or Mother God, many ask, what is an offshoot? No, you can ask the question out loud. What is unfolding? It's a piece, it's like a multiplication of a piece of it. He didn't miss a piece, so I left. A piece of it unfolded for me to leave. So if I'm that size, what do we think of our father or mother God? You have no idea. You have no idea my brothers. Now let's think about the following, the universe is as big as it is. If it controls everything, if it is the generating energy of this entire universe, how big is it? So many are already asking themselves, and where is it? Where does he stay? He is everywhere. As you say, he is omnipresent, omniscient, all, all functions, he is anywhere, he is everywhere. So my brothers, for you to understand all this, it's complicated, but I'm trying to help you. So let's go. You already know my size, you know that I am a shining star, because I am pure energy. And my conscience? We are energy with consciousness. Not the consciousness embedded in a brain with cells, as you think. We are an energy with consciousness. Just that, not with the brain, with consciousness, it's different. So we know what we have to do, we know our roles, we know our duties. So what reaches you, is, is more than a millionth, a millionth is not much, it is an infinitesimal particle of my energy, which reaches each one of you and you already feel that it is strong. So I won't say anything more. I already said who I am, how I am. And all the other archangels that I mentioned here with Raphael, like Uriel and Gabriel, are exactly the same size as me. We are all an offshoot of our father or mother God. So we can often say that we can even carry your Sunday. For us it is small, and we have a particularity, that we can enlarge and reduce its size, as needed. So if we have to move an entire solar system, we will grow proportionally to be able to do that, and the entire solar system will be moved. No, no, don't imagine that we are the ones pushing the planets and solar systems, that's not it. I'm saying that if we need to move a solar system out of place, we will have the strength to do so. Your solar system was created within a magnetic field in which it rotates on its own. God did not make things to be dependent on him. Everything has its own wisdom to move on its own. And that's what happens. The suns are created, after the suns come the planets, each with its own particularity. Suns are normally large stars of light, so they can give light to everyone orbiting around them. Then, Soon after the star is created, the stars that will orbit around it are created, and systems are often created that will orbit around this large star, such as your system around Alcyon. So all of this, when it is created, is created very carefully, so that everything happens. Imagine if the planet's orbits started hitting each other? It would not be the wisdom of our father or mother God, because nothing goes wrong. All the planets circle the star and no one bumps into each other, due to the distance between them. Now what each planet is, what each planet will be, is up to our father or mother God. He creates the planets with exactly some function. Normally the idea of our father or mother God is to increase the universe more and more, 
so that this hole becomes bigger and bigger. No, souls have not stopped being created, they continue to be created, because souls also die. Lots of people with their mouths open. Calm down my brothers. Calm down, I just gave you a short sentence, I'll explain later. Yes, souls die. But how do they die? It's not when the human outfit dies, I can guarantee that. But I'm going to have a video just talking about the soul. Wait a little bit, a little more. So let's go. Souls die, new souls need to be created. Think about this, the universe is like a big beating heart. It pulsates, and it often shrinks and expands by the very nature of the universe. And every time the universe expands it grows a little more. So new souls have to be created to populate the created planets. So my brothers, I think I've already left enough information here today, and I want you to think about it. Imagine in your minds how this all works and we continue tomorrow. I am Archangel Michael. I am always here, beside each of you.